morning guys. Um, Mrs. G is not going to actually be voicing over here because the microphone is having difficulty again. So you're not going to hear her today. Um, what we're going to talk about today is balancing equations. Uh, yesterday we talked about writing formula equations. In order to talk about balancing equations you need to know how to count elements. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to take a moment here. We're going to see if you can count how many atoms of each element are in uh, these three compounds. So why don't you so why don't you take a moment right now and pause and see if you can count how many sodium, how many hydrogen, and how many oxygen and sodium hydroxide. Do the same thing for lithium sulfate and for Okay, so now that you've done that, we're going to check this. Um, the first one's not too difficult. Uh, there's a one understood to be in the position of each of these sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen uh, atoms. Since there's no other subscripts, we just go for one, one, and one hydrogen. Okay. The subscript two on lithium here suggests that there's two atoms of lithium. The lack of subscript on sulfur is implied to be one atom of sulfur. And then the four on oxygen implies that there's four oxygens. When we take a look at calcium phosphate, uh, I see three calciums. And then this two subscript has to actually get distributed into everything for phosphate. Since there's understood to be, to be a one on phosphorus, it's P1 times two tells you that there's two phosphoruses. For oxygen, it's O4 times two is equal to eight oxygens. All right. Uh, so the law of conservation of matter does uh, have to apply to chemical reactions, so we can't create or destroy atoms, just like Dalton had said. Uh, no, atom, no new atoms are created, no new atoms are destroyed. Uh, the only thing that really is going on here is that chemical bonds, which are actually measured in energy, are created, destroyed, or rearranged. So can we really conserve matter here? Uh, let's consider the, the chemical equation for the formation of water. How do we do this? Okay, the mechanics of how we do it. The mechanics of how we do it. The mechanics of how we do this. Usually the way I like to suggest that you balance chemical equations. You list out all your elements down the center underneath the arrow. Okay, so hydrogen is one of my elements, so I write H. And I also write oxygen. Notice there's no need for subscripts here because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be counting how many things are on my reactant side and writing it on the reactant side. And I'm going to be counting how many things are on the product side, how many atoms are on the product side, and put that on the product side. Okay, so for instance, I originally start out with two hydrogens on the, on the reactant side, and I start out with two oxygens on the reactant side. Right, I see two hydrogens and one oxygen. So the way to do this is I'm going to write down what's called a coefficient. Coefficients are numbers that you can write in front of chemical formulas. And they mean that you're going to have more of that particular chemical formula. So if I wrote a two in front of one of these things, I'd have two molecules of it. Uh, or if I had a three in front of it, it would mean that I'd have three molecules. Some people like to read it as molecules. Other people like to read it as moles. Okay. Uh, so in order to fix this, I need more oxygens. I'm going to write a two coefficient in front of H2O. That way I have more oxygens. As a matter of fact, I'll have two of them. Uh, now in doing this, I do mess up my hydrogens, and I changed how many hydrogens I've got. So now I have four. Um, this often happens in trying to balance a chemical formula, and once you write one coefficient, most of the time you have to write another and then another. You have to undo what you have done. Uh, so to, uh, I now have to fix my hydrogens, and that's pretty simple. Hydrogen over here is elemental, so by putting a coefficient on it, um, I'm going to be able to change it to be four atoms of hydrogen, and this is going to be balanced. All right, so in summary, these twos that I've placed are called coefficients, and I'm placing them because I want, I want to balance out how many atoms are on the left and how many atoms are on the right. All right, so the purpose of balancing equations is to show how much of a, each reactant is needed to make a certain quantity of product. You can kind of think about this as being analogous to making 
uh, cookies, having a recipe for cookies. A recipe for cookies would tell you how much flour, how much, uh, how many eggs, how much sugar, how many chocolate chips you need, uh, and it would also tell you how many cookies it yields when it's done. Uh, chemical reaction is very similar. Uh, what can we do to make sure that this is balanced out? Well, we can add coefficients like I've just talked about in the previous slide, uh, and these coefficients wind up acting as a multiplier. Um, so, if I was trying to look at this and figure out how many carbons I've got, it looks like I've got one carbon here and two oxygens here. Here, I've got two carbons and four oxygens. And if I'm going to look at barium hydroxide, you could probably press pause and see if you can do this. This is the toughest part. How many bariums, how many oxygens, and how many hydrogens? Okay, there are two bariums. This two is distributed into the hydroxide, so there are actually two oxygens times the two on the coefficient, so it's four. And there are two hydrogens times the two on the coefficient, so there are four hydrogens. Some general rules for balancing. Uh, the first rule for balancing is make sure you've identified your products and your reactants. Uh, make sure those equations are written properly and the formulas are correct. Uh, the second is to make sure that you count the atoms. Look for polyatomic ions on both sides. If I have nitrate as a reactant and nitrate as a product, I don't need to count nitrogen and oxygen separately. I can count nitrate as a whole unit. Um, however, if I see nitrate on a reactant side and I don't see nitrate on the reactant side, it's separated into nitrogen and oxygen, then I'll need to count nitrogen and oxygen separately. Make sure to insert coefficients as needed. Remember, you're not allowed to change the formula, so you cannot change the subscripts. Um, and you're going to balance one atom or one polyatomic ion at a time. Delay balancing elements. This is a hint here. Delay uh, balancing your single elements until last. So if you see something that's elemental, like oxygen, or like oxygen gas, or like iron, all by itself, then you want to do that one last because that's going to help you out. Okay. Uh, finally, verify your results. Double check your work and make sure that the numbers that uh, that you uh, think you added up actually are correct. All right. So let's try one out here. Again, the way that I like to work these out um, as I start out is uh, to write out the elements, a list of the elements vertically. Uh, that appear on the reactant side. Sodium appears, hydrogen appears, and oxygen appears, so that's why I wrote it in that order. There's one sodium, there's two hydrogen, and one oxygen. Now on the right hand side I'm seeing one sodium. My number of hydrogens, now this is not in the same order, so I've got to be careful. I don't want to count my oxygen, I want to count my hydrogen. One, two, three. I've seen three hydrogens, and oxygens I'm seeing one. It appears that hydrogen's my problem. Um, I've got two on the left and three on the right. Uh, one of the reasons why I've got three on the right is because of this single hydrogen here. Uh, now notice my hydrogens over here come in pairs, so it's going to be impossible to ever have an odd number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a two out here in front of sodium hydroxide. That way it's going to make the number of hydrogens even. All right, there's going to be four hydrogens here. That changed my sodiums and it changed my oxygens. There's two of each. So now I have to uh, now I have to fix all of my elements still. When I come back over here to the reactant side, I'm not going to change my sodium because sodium is elemental. I'm going to go for the water first and try and fix things with the water. So I'm going to put a coefficient in front of water of two. That way I'm still trying to fix my hydrogens. Four hydrogens and two oxygens are what I get by doing that. Now this is good because that actually fixed my hydrogens and oxygens and the only thing left is sodium. And I have elemental sodium, so my one change on elemental sodium is going to change only sodium. And now, and now I have a balanced chemical reaction. I want to double check my work. I see two sodiums as reactants and two as products. I see four hydrogens as reactants and I do see four as products. 
I see two oxygens as reactants, and I see two as products. I'm right. Okay. All right. So calcium and silicon and chlorine are the elements that I'm seeing in this reaction. Uh, it looks like two calciums on the left, one silicon, and two chlorines. Uh, a calcium, six chlorines, and a silicon. All right. Now I can fix whatever I want first. I could try fixing chlorine first, but chlorine's an element here, so I'm not going to bother with it. I think I'm going to do that one last. I can fix calcium instead, though, because if I fix calcium, check this out. I put a 2 here, and that changes my number of chlorine. So had I actually changed chlorine in the first place, I would be wrong right now. Uh, and I'd need to change it again. So calcium's done. Uh, the other thing to check on here, calcium's done, silicon's done. I guess chlorine's the last one, so I'm going to put a 4 in front of the chlorine here. And that's going to make the number of chlorines 8. Now I think I'm done, so I should double check at the top. I see two calciums on the reactants and two on the products. I see one silicon on the reactants and one on the products. I see eight chlorines on the reactants, and I see eight chlorines on the products. We're, we're going to try this one out. This is, uh, this is the methane uh, combustion reaction, just like when we did the methane mamba. So I'm going to do carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It looks like there's three carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens. There's a carbon, there's two oxygen, I'm sorry, two hydrogens, and there are three oxygens. Again, I'm thinking that I'll do oxygen last because oxygen is, appears as an elemental gas in my uh, in my formula. So perhaps I'll work on carbons first. Carbon looks like it's going to be easy. I want three carbons on the right side. So three carbons will change my number of oxygens also to six. Changing my hydrogens, let's see, I'm going to want four hydrogens, I'm going to want four waters. That way I get a total of eight hydrogens. Four times one is four, plus the f six that I've got there, that's ten oxygens in total. So carbons and hydrogens look like they're balanced. I can now tackle the oxygens. To get ten oxygens on the left side, all I need to do is put a five here, and now I have ten oxygens. Let's uh, double check up at the top here. There are three carbons on the reactant side and three on the product side. There are eight hydrogens on the reactant side and eight on the product side. There are ten oxygen atoms on the product side, and I see six plus four, that's ten oxygens on the reactants. I'm sorry, ten oxygens on the product side.